play. It looks like it will be Wilson. He's going to play a Misty Rainforest, go down to 19, and we'll see how he wants to start the game. Manipulation or a creature? Now, these, these kind of matchups are either frustrating or comical, depending on your perspective, because they are very land light strategies with all non-basic lands and four wastelands in each deck. So often one player is rendered unable to play spells. And neither player playing Stifle in their decks, however. So I do agree with you. Wastelands will make things look a little bit awkward. As here's a ponder for Wilson. He's looking at look, looks like three pretty good cards. He's got a Brainstorm, a couple of red cards in his hand. Looks like a Lightning Bolt and a Grim Lava Mancer. He's going to keep with the Ponder and pass the turn back over to Patel, who will draw a card. Let's see how he wants to progress things. Bird Catacombs is a pretty good place to start. So down to 19 he goes. Going to match it up with Wilson. See what land he wants to search out. Looks like it's going to be an Underground C. We'll see what he wants to play on his first turn of the game. I believe he has the Death Ride Shaman. That card is real good. It is quite potent. It'll be interesting to see next turn if JK wants to deploy Grimaud Mancer or just kill it straight away with Lightning Bolt. Love Mancer being the higher upside play, oh, but of much riskier. And there is the Death Ray Shaman. So Wilson will untap and take a draw here. Trudy Nemesis, again, he knows the cards that are coming because he kept the cards on top with Ponder. This is a Pluto Delta. And the follow-up, well, I see a Brainstorm. He's got a couple of those in his hand. Could just be a Lightning Bolt here, too. Yeah, the even risk... That, even that Grim Lava Mancer you mentioned. The risk here is that he can't really play two red spells in one turn because he needs to be able to go get a Tropical Island with a fetch land. Search out a Tundra. Yeah, or Tundra. Volcanic, yeah. There is a lightning bolt. And you can see Jacob sequencing spells in such a way, prioritizing the Grimlove Mancer over resolving this bolt yeah, against I, a potential daze. I imagine he knows what he's up against now. Not many decks go Underground Sea plus Deathrite Shaman. So you're either against a Bug Delver deck or you're against Esper Deathweight. Either way, getting Deathrite Shaman off the board is pretty important. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Rainforest here to start. Whether or not his follow up is Delver Secrets or Stoneforge Mystic, again, Grimlove Mancer provides a lot there. Patel is going to brainstorm. Three cards coming. And he'll put two back and can make it a perfect one with the Misty. So decisions, decisions. You do see a Force of Will over there. There's also a Tarmogoyf in the hand. Not sure the rest of the contents, but Patel will put two back here in a moment. Looks like Underground Sea is happy to put back. So he doesn't want one of the lands. And now a Mystery card is going to go on top of that, it looks like. And Jacob has kept True Name Nemesis in his hand, also through the sequence of cantripping and so forth. So uh, a really high upside draw here if he's able to find that third land. Uh, Patel may not have an answer at the ready. So Patel's going to put a couple back. He thought about putting a Wasteland back, decided against it. There is a Delver of Secrets in his hand as well right now. Let's see if maybe he wants to sacrifice and deploy that, but it looks like he may be considering playing around days at this point as well. So a lot of things to think about right now if you're Patel. And he may not want to reshuffle also. Yeah. It looks like, all right, he will sacrifice the fetch land and go down to 18. So reshuffling is A-OK. -okay. Let's see if it's going to be a bayou or a tropical island. It looks like it's going to be a bayou. Yeah, what's the second black source of mana here? Liliana the Veil in his deck, so. And you saw, actually, he does just get bayou and pass the turn back. So there's a real chance here that he thinks he's playing against Rug Delver, which is something that Wilson is known for playing and winning with. So he's trying to play around Stifle, but that's actually not there. Yeah, everything that, that Jacob's done so far would indicate that. You know, the main deck from Love Mancer is a little bit strange or whatever, but, I mean, that's a card that Rug Delver could play. Yeah, you see one sometimes. Yeah. Not, not out of the ordinary. Wilson brainstorming here. Going to shuffle Patel's deck before finishing resolving this. We'll see what Jacob does want to find here and put back. So a lot of cards here for the youngster. It looks like he's possibly locked here. I do not know if he has a, a third land and a, clearly not a white source of mana. Yeah, it does not look like the best brainstorm here. So two cards will go back. I don't think there's a fetch land here to make this a good brainstorm. And yeah, all he can do is pass the turn back, so he, is, he does look to be brainstorm locked. He does have another copy of brainstorm in his hand. So, you know, next turn he'll draw a card, and then if he does elect, elect to brainstorm, he'll see one card that he knows and then two brand new ones. However, Patel's Wasteland is actually looking quite good now. 
And the shields are down. You know, Jenkins missed the land drop here after brainstorming. So if Patel is on the ball here, he knows the same thing that Jacob knows, that there's no mana coming here for a little while. And that's a Tarmoglyph. Wilson wants to take a look at the graveyard, see exactly how big the Lurgoyf is. And a, an interesting tap here from Patel means basically he doesn't have Spell Pierce, for starters, and that he's probably intending on using Wasteland here after this Tarmogoyf resolves. But of course, at this point, it seems as though he's just trying to play around days again. I believe he thinks that Wilson is on Rug Delver at this point. So this is an attempt to play around days, which seems relatively smart in this situation. I think if you're Wilson, however, because you don't have white mana yet, you might have to consider Force of Willingness. Yeah, it seems that way. He can't defend himself, and he won't be able to for a couple turns, unless he's willing to use the Brainstorm next turn to try to find a land, but that's an extremely risky play. You can see Jacob not too thrilled with having to cast Force of Willingness, removing a True Name Nemesis. So two really powerful cards here to keep Tarmogoyf off the table. So if Patel has a Force of Will, maybe he wants to fight back, or you do see a Force along with the Delver to remove, so... The answer is yes, he does want to fight over this and get Tarmogoyf in play. I like fighting over this in this spot. It, Jacob clearly is concerned about it because he's willing to force of will it. And the Delver of Secrets that Patel has, not a lot of value in the face of this active Grim Lava Mancer that he can't kill. So uh, a good use of resources there. And there's a 4-5 or five Tarmogoyf. Patel just going to pass the turn back, not going to fire off the Wasteland just yet. Lava Mancing will take place here. And while the shields are down from Stifle, even though it doesn't exist, Patel will use that. Now that volcanic that's over there with the true name, it should actually be in Jacob's graveyard. So we will actually get that sorted out. He put that in his exiled pile, but it shouldn't be exiled. So. Yeah, and I think the, the spotter has it too. Yep. Yeah, because Wasteland took care of that. So now we're all happy, happy. Wilson got to untap now, take a draw. He knows what this top card is. It's Copy of Stoneforge Mystic. Now this is a brainstorm that he's trying to resolve and it will resolve. So one, two, and three. I think maybe the last card was a fetch land. It appears so. And that yes. was really, really important here for Jacob. Now we get something going here. I guess to unlock white mana, source of plot shares this Tarmogoyf, and uh, unlock the Stoneforge Mystic that's been in his hand as well. You know, Wilson's going to very quickly sacrifice that Misty Rainforest. Going to go grab a Tundra, and you have to imagine right now is a great time to fire off this Swords and see if it does resolve here. A little sigh of relief here from Jacob. Yeah, he it could have gotten really ugly. If that last yeah. card wasn't a land, the game may have just ended. So here's the swords on the Goyf. And we will see if this will resolve in just a moment. So we'll probably look over his hand, see if there's anything he can do about this. And the answer looks to be a resounding no. So Tarma Goyf will die. Lava Mantra will come into the red zone. Patel will gain a little, take a little, and then untap and take his turn. And the last cards in his hand, I believe, are a land and a Liliana of the Veil. I don't know if he's going to be willing to deploy this into the face of the daze he was clearly playing around last turn. Mm -hmm. and Wilson actually kept that daze in his hand, so looks like Patel may lead off with a ponder. Not a bad place to start. That's exactly what he's going to do. So time to take a look at the top three cards. Wasteland among them. Wasteland's not too shabby right now. Could cut off red or white mana. Very hard to say no to it. And if he's got an abrupt decay in this top three as well, then he's almost certainly keeping all three of these. Yeah, and he's, he's going to keep them. Too high impact. And now it's time for a thought season. That's not a bad day's target. Jacob running out of time, really, to use this uh, that card effectively. And you see, he's, I mean, he had the option of which land he wanted to pick up there. He, yeah. he clearly cares more about the white source than the red one. Now, Patel did not keep the wasteland there as he was trying to thought seize that turn, but still heads up play from Jacob. So just a delta. Now Jacob going to play this and try to resolve Stoneforge Mystic. Patel was just one card in his hand, so that's good to go. And this is doing some really damage, some real damage to the Liliana that's in his hand. He can protect Stoneforge Missy if he's feeling so inclined. Although, depending on how Patel wants to use this wasteland, there could be some some misdirection here. If Patel plays the Liliana and minuses, 
he can then wasteland the relevant mana source that uh, Jacob decides to keep. If he keeps Stoneforge Mystic, he can go after the Tundra, and if he keeps Grim Lava Mancer, then he can go after the Volcanic Island. Well, back to Patel we go. Is he reorganizing the mana, figuring out how he wants to move forward here. And this is typically how these games go. It's, it feels just like a game of attrition. You know, by turn four and by turn five, which is where we're at, neither player has very many cards in hand. The problem with this is, uh, you know, if you're on Patel's side of this, is that the Stoneforge Mystic is a huge threat because Batter Skull is very hard to, for the second to get off the table or beat. I mean, there's Liliana, which may be able to do it some percentage of the time. Rupt K obviously can't touch it. And the creatures aren't large enough unless Tarmogoyf gets out of control. So that's a unique threat that Jacob has in this matchup that requires specific answers from Patel. Tropical Island will be what is searched for with the polluted Delta. Perhaps it's Liliana time. Maybe yes, maybe no. Yeah, now he has the Wasteland in hand, so he's decided, do I want to play Wasteland, which informs his what he chooses to sacrifice, or how do I play around days? Yeah, now there it is, Liliana. And he's going the alternate route. So this is going to take down. Lava Mancer is going to bite the dust. I think we're going to see it now Wasteland take care of the Tundra. Yeah, so. Let's see if Jacob's able to find a land here. He's got a Wasteland, but he doesn't have a White Source. So now Stoneforge is going to come in and take care of Liliana. Still a pretty good exchange there for Wilson. Yeah, not shabby. Wasteland going to take down an Underground Sea, but Patel still does have access to both colors of mana. Excuse me, all three colors of mana. Yeah, that's the point of getting one of each dual land there, diversifies and make sure that you can't get cut off of a color if you get wastelanded. Yeah, it's one thing that Bug can do that Blue Eye Red can't do. Yes. Because Blue Eye Red doesn't play a plateau, which, to be fair, makes sense. Because you can't draw a plateau in your day's deck. Yeah. Wilson with a land. This is on the upkeep. I'm going to sacrifice this. And he's doing this now, so there's no chance of something weird like Vendillion Click happening to him. And for whatever reason, if the opponent does have a stifle, it would be on the upkeep for the fetch land. Yeah. So would cause Patel to use mana on his turn. So it might seem like a minor play, but it is a tight one there by Wilson. Although it appears he's allowing Patel to go into his draw step. Yeah, Land of Indillion Click does make things a little bit more difficult. I'm surprised that Jacob just didn't do that straight away. Yeah, I mean, Vendillion Click is the one card that makes us end up being pretty bad. And there is the Batter Skull. So it'll be time to untap and take a draw here in just a moment and attack for five. I believe Patel has an abrupt decay. The question is Germ Token or Stoneforge, and it's going to be Germ Token. Take it without much in the way of mana, so he may have a lot of time here uh, before that Batter Skull gets reset. Does have a clock now, however. And that is a Delver of Secrets. See if this will flip. You see Patel's hand. It's just two lands. Going to play one of them. Underground Sea. Pass the turn back. This attrition war is in favor of Wilson. And now Delver is flipping. So it looks like he's going to be able to be able to start winning the race as well. So here's a Spell Pierce and an attack for four. Patel going to go down to ten. I believe two Spell Pierces left over in Jacob's hand. That is the grip. Patel draws. It's a polluted Delta. You see he considered... Playing a land, he still is considering. Going to play the Delta before passing the turn back over to Wilson, who's going to draw and quickly attack again. Patel's going to go down to six. Wilson again with two spell pierces, now a mystery card. Patel takes a draw. He's looking for a card like Abrupt Decay. That's the best one he can find. Let's see Delver's secrets drawn this turn. So there that is. Patel's going to need that to flip, however. He can't block this turn. No. And Forcible says absolutely not. Wilson sensing a little bit of weakness there. For sure, I, you know, if Patel has had anything, he would have cast it by now. Mm -hmm. If it was cantrips or creatures or removal spell, the only card he could conceivably be sitting on is Force of Will. And yeah, there's a backup Delver of Secrets. So even if Patel does draw Abrupt Decay right now for the Insectile Aberration, he would still die, and he will concede the game. So Jacob Wilson up a game here with Blue Red Delver over Bug Delver. Straightforward stuff. I mean, uh, Patel just a little light on action. Jacob's been here before. We know that. Yes. He's Delver Strategies is how he has really made his name. Has won a, He's obviously won a Grand Prix and Finals of Pro Tour. Lost in the finals of a Grand Prix in Europe as well. So a lot of legacy experience. Has won some legacy opens. It's a fun 
to watch him play Delver Strategies. And most of the experience with Rug. I yeah. mean, I was initially confused here when we went into the match. I just assumed based on his opening and his history, uh, Blue White Red mixing it up just a little bit for him this weekend. Sideboard time. We will start with Patels. Two Golgari Charms, two Vendillion Clicks, a Sylvan Library, an Envelope, a Nile Spell Bomb, a Graftaker's Cage, three copies of Hindutorak, a Liliana of the Veil, and three Disfigures. I think he's going to want the Disfigures. Of course, very good answers to Delver of Secrets and Stoneforge Mystic, the additional Liliana of the Veil. The Golgari Charms might come in. Jacob did show Trudene Nemesis to that Force of Will. Now, there's only one on the list, but Patel does not know that. And... Uh, I think that may do it. I mean, maybe he wants Vendillion Click as, as additional threats to try to weather the storm of Jacob's removal, but... I, I think you're basically just going to see the disfigures and, and so forth. On uh, Wilson's side here, two Swords of Plowshares, two Pyroblasts, a Fourth Bolt, a Sword of Feast and Famine, a Wear and Tear, a True Name Nemesis, two Meddling Mage, a Graphic Rich Cage, an Aether Sworn Candace, a Fluster Storm, and two copies of Rest in Peace. Gotta love Rest in Peace against the Deathrite Shaman Tarmogoyf deck. That one's obvious. Yeah, you're just trying to overload their Abrupt Decays in the matchup, and if your Rest in Peace eats an Abrupt Decay, that's one less they can fight over Stoneforge Mystic, Delver of Secrets, Mazaz Jate, and so forth. Two Swords of Plowshares will give... Wilson, a little additional removal to go with the ones that he has in his main deck, along with those lightning bolts. Nothing too crazy going on here. Sword and Feast and Famine is a right, because he can't search for an additional Truly Nemesis in this fair matchup you got to like, but at the same time, you know that your opponent has access to Golgari Charms, so how good is it in reality? It's yeah. still good, though, I think. I think it's still probably good enough to bring in. I think the Sword of Feast and Famine is really good. A pro... Pro green, pro black is is nice against Patel's deck, of course. But I think the bigger thing is just a third piece of equipment is valuable in a matchup that's going to go for a long time. These players are going to be trading a lot of removal spells, a lot of cantrips, and so forth. And you can easily imagine a game where Jacob has to go and Stoneforge a second or third time. So having more equipment and more options is a valuable thing for him. You could also see the Fluster Storm come in here. I wouldn't be too surprised to see that as Patel's deck does have a lot of spells. I personally not a huge Flusterstorm fan in this kind of matchup because the, the biggest cards that Jacob wants to fight over are uh, Abrupt Decay and Liliana the Veil, neither of which Flusterstorm work against. But you are right, there are still plenty of ponders and brainstorms and, and so forth for him to fight over. If you are just joining us right now, Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, along with Matthias Hunt, Andrew Shrout, and Nick Miller. It's our Season 2 Invitational Weekend here in Columbus from Origins Game Fair. We're in Round 9 of 10 of our Legacy Open. We've already two, we've already crowned two champions, excuse me, and we are looking to crown a third. We know one player who is in the Elimination Rounds now. It's Brian Brondewin. Went 8-0 through the Swiss, so he's able to double draw in. We're trying to figure out the other seven. Had a lot of success with that deck. Uh, Forrowed the first leg of the Legacy portion of the Invitational. Faltered in the second part of Day 2, but he's been putting up some pretty reliable results now with uh, all manner of counter balance strategies. Yeah, another tough invitational for Brian, though. After a fantastic start, not able to close it out and make the top eight and potentially win one of these things. This is back-to-back -back invitationals where he's done that. And yes, he has punched his ticket to the Players' Championship, which I imagine is the ultimate goal, but you do want to win every tournament that you play in. And, and after great starts for Brian, 10-0 in the last one, 9-0-1 in this one, not able to convert. It's pretty tough. Uh, and, and the goal that you're, you alluded to got met months ago, you know, yeah. and in some ways was, was met pretty early in season one. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure this, this tournament frustrating. Now, his finish is still nothing to be ashamed about. Not and, uh, you know, a lot of money for that finish as well. But you are right. I'm sure this, the back-to-back 9-0-1 and 10-0 starts without a top eight, probably frustrating. A death right shaman here for Patel to begin things off. Off an underground sea. You see Wilson with the Tundra into a ponder. Let me time to take a little look here at the top couple of cards. Consult the grip. Looks like he's happy, happy. One of the worst feelings when your opponent does keep with that ponder. Pretty happy with the next couple of draws here as Patel will take a draw, and it's going to be a thought seize. And this might be one of the games where Patel is able to leverage the mana advantage provided by Deathrite Shaman. He has access to Wasteland. Wasteland plus Deathrite Shaman gives him an enormous edge. Jacob might not have more lands to function. Patel can fi function just fine off of two mana, and this also shuts off at Jacob's dazes this turn if that's going on in his hand. Here's the thought seize now. Patel wants to see that hand, and this is exactly a two-bolt to Delver, a Force of Will, a Taxian Probe, a Tundra, and a Wasteland. Don't forget, Wilson did keep with that first ponder, so he knows the next two cards on top of his deck. Makes you wonder if there's a Red Source hanging out over there. Would stand to reason. I mean, uh, this, this hand doesn't really do much of anything uh, if there isn't Red Mana next turn. Decisions, decisions here for Mattel, who's looking at a ponder of his own, along with a Brainstorm and a Liliana the Veil. So definitely some powerful cards over there. Just have to figure out the best way to leverage them because he does have a mana advantage for right now. There's two cards here that allow Patel to cut a path. 
force of will and delver of secrets he's going to take the force of will that's his only defense right now against spells so if patel is trying to set up something like liliana the veil that makes the most sense force of will will be the selection and now death right looks like it may be coming into the red zone here and it is so not going to use that for mana wilson will draw a card and it was a polluted delta so there's the red source that we had a feeling he already knew about the oft forgotten fourth power of death right shaman being able to attack for one ah yes yes So red man is here for Wilson. Does have those two bolts at the ready. And we're going to see him fire one off here. It says, Deathrite Shaman, you need to leave, and it is gone. Patel will untap. It's time to take a draw. Looks like a copy of Disfigure, and he's going to lead off here with a Brainstorm. So that will resolve. Take a look at a couple of cards here. See if he finds anything he likes. Was a little surprised to see Patel not fire off that cantrip last turn. Yeah, that's why I was actually taken back by the attack for one. I did not expect to see that. I think that in that situation, you just want to be as efficient in, as efficient as possible with your death right, Shaman. That one damage doesn't really mean a lot in the grand scheme of things. Particularly when you're looking at a hand of Lightning Bolt and Wasteland from Jacob, you know there's a, a strong possibility you may not be able to cast very much. Gataxian Probe here from Wilson. He wants to see what Patel is working with. He now knows there are two copies of Disfigure, along with a Liliana of the Veil and a Brainstorm. So any Delver of Secrets that Wilson may have, well, he knows those aren't going to be very good this game. But Wilson is finding a bunch of wastelands here, and Patel may not be able to defend himself from these. There is the Delver. This will be on the upkeep. Fire away. Daring the opponent to brainstorm here, basically. Or perhaps cast a disfigure. I was a little bit surprised not to see Wilson do this to the to the land when, when it was tapped. It looks like he may be, want, may be trying to lead Patel into doing something here. Yeah. There's a disfigure to take care of the Delver. So there goes the land, and now Patel will draw a card. Patel will sacrifice that polluted delta, so it's time to go searching for a land. We'll see if it's going to be another underground sea. And it will. The blue-black land seems the most important right now. And I believe Jacob, with another wasteland left over in his hand here, Patel may be digging for mana and he risks getting brainstorm locked here with no mana in play it looks to be a risk that needs to be taken now if he has something else to do with this mana, i'm sure he will but if he's hunting right now you see a death right shaman so he does have something to do and there is death right shaman however wilson does have something to do about that it is a lightning bolt wilson says i'm gonna wasteland here i'm gonna bolt there and pass the turn back a pretty efficient turn there for jacob Patel just has to pass the turn back, and now Jacob can start to get to work, because there's a Delver of Secrets. We saw Pyroblast was the draw. Patel draws a card. It's a Verdant Catacombs. So a pretty important one there. Again, the matchup, land light and wasteland heavy. Yeah, if you expected a lot of lands here, you have come to the wrong place. Patel with 20, and uh, Jacob, I assume, with, oh, also with 20. Exactly, with 20, yeah. yeah. A little more mana than usual. Yeah, for him, given that Rug Delver always plays 18. Yeah. So this is a little bit more heavy for him, but he also is playing a little bit of a different deck with a higher curve due to Trinity Nemesis and those equipment. There are games where you do have to try to hard cast that batter skull. So maybe considering a brainstorm, maybe it's time for disfigure number two. You don't want to let that Delver get any shots in. Try to keep that light total as high as you can so you can draw onto these mana problems you're having. You also have to be aware that this may be, again, the last time you have this underground sea, so make it count. There's just figure. Wilson takes a draw. That's not a bad one. Stone Forge Mystic. That's going to resolve. Time to go with searching. Wouldn't be surprised to see if he batter skull. And there it is. Again, put him to the test. These these blood decks are pretty soft to this card. So. Patel's already used two disfigures, so you have to imagine he doesn't have another one. Misty Rainforest, not a bad draw here. This is a thought seize. That's not too bad either. Going to show the grip, Will Wilson. Trinity Nemesis, Batter Skull, and Pyroblast. Pyroblast is a really good one for Patel to know about. That's something he can play around. Not a lot of blue cards in this deck. Gonna take the equipment, as that one may be the biggest problem of all, but we can't sell True Name short, because that one's still really good. But Wilson's a land away from casting it. Still is now, so Wilson just gonna serve for one, put Patel down at 13, drew a copy of Force, the will to go along with True Name before passing the turn back. Another land off the top here for Patel. That's really valuable. He thought about brainstorming, but 
he's got to imagine that's going to get countered by Red Blast. Yeah, if I'm Patel, I'm just strongly considering fetching and putting Liliana into play. Hope it works. Yep. You give him a one-turn window to find a land. If not, you take up Liliana again, and then you have protection against True Name Nemesis. Pretty good spot to be in. Definitely better to then having your Brainstorm run into a Pyroblast. Yeah. And then passing the turn. I wouldn't like that turn. That's not quite as good. I think you're right. This is much better. Let's hope for the best. See if this does resolve here. Let's all we'll present that deck over to Wilson. And a very good Planeswalker is going to be placed in this deck. And Wilson immediately says, I do not think so. Force of Will removing Tree and Nemesis. Wilson will take one to do so, but putting a lot of emphasis on making sure Liliana is not resolved. It puts him on, if he doesn't top deck a land this turn, that Liliana is a disaster for him. Mm -hmm. And it puts his hand as Pyroblast against a Brainstorm with a Stoneforge Mystic in play. Not a spot, bad spot to be in. We did see the attack for one there, and that was it. So Patel will draw a card. We know about the Brainstorm that, that he didn't want to cast into that Red Elemental Blast. And it might just be forced to do it, honestly, just to get this stage of the game over with. So there is Brainstorm, and there's, there's your Pyroblast. So that exchange is made. Now there's Delver's secret. So putting more emphasis on Delver here than Brainstorm. Which makes sense, you know, with only one card in his hand. There's a good chance he gets Brainstorm locked, and it doesn't really amount to very much. A big draw there from Wilson. It's a Brainstorm of his own. So three cards coming. He already had a rest in peace. It looks like he has a second one. So he's going to put a couple cards back. He's going to keep rest in peace plus fetch land in his hand. And he will sacrifice the Misty Rainforest. Go down to 14. Will Jacob. Time to search out a land. Probably deploy the old rest in peace and attack for one. And this is to my point about while they were sideboarding, Jacob bringing in more equipment. The games just kind of take on this sort of tone post-board where uh, all the resources are getting exhausted and being able to top deck and equipment here is really excellent. Can the Delver flip it? Can. And in a big way, revealing a brainstorm. Going to start by attacking here for three. Wilson's going to go down to 11 and the race is on. Let's we'll see if Patel has any interest in guessing brainstorm right now. The answer is yes. So that will be exiled. Hit one, two, and three. There are some bad draws here, like Tarmogoy for Death, right, Shaman? But a card like Abrupt Decay does look like it's a pretty good one. There's another, also another Delver of Secrets, so let's see if Patel can actually set that up. Looks like Vendillion Click also amongst the cards. That one's pretty good, too. Patel says, I will drop down a Delver. I may not have a way to flip it, but you don't know that. Wilson's going to take a draw. He's going to serve in for one. Patel's going to go down to eight, but currently the race favors the player on the right. Take a look here for Delver. And Wilson says, just a moment, please. And he's going to swords that. So Patel will gain a life, but that Delver wasn't going to flip anyway. Yep. Good job by Patel there pointing. I mean, he declared the trigger like it was meaningful. Yeah. He could have very easily just drawn his card because he knows yeah. the top cards of his deck. But that's just good technical play, in my opinion. Now, the top card is actually this, which is Vendillion Click. Wilson going to show a force of will. Patel says, yeah, you can have that. As Wilson will come into the red zone here, it's 8-8. But in reality, it's about to be 8-2. to Yeah. Two flyers in the air here, Jacob, with no defense. Unless there's an arc trail hanging out here. Ooh, no, that would be a delight. That would be delightful. Yeah. <laughs> but it is not... And Patel will tie things up. Bug Delver, blue, white, red Delver, going to game number three. Some pretty fortunate draws there by Patel uh, in the mid game at the risk of getting locked with no lands, but found uh, either two or three running lands that allowed him to initiate a fight over Liliana the Veil. That caused Jacob to lose his ace, which was true name nemesis. And then uh, Patel was able to, you know, he just has higher impact cards for the most part in his deck from that spot. Game number three going to be underway here between Wilson and Patel. This Del Vermeer, one of these players, whoever does win, going to be headed here to the elimination rounds, it looks like. Again, very close to the cutoff, which means chances are they'll be able to draw into the top eight and join Brian Braun Duin in the elimination rounds later this evening. And six others. The Miracle Man. Yeah. Oh, no, no, come on. I'm that's, sorry. That's Joe. I'm sorry. One tournament does not make you the Miracle Man. Really? No. No, 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 no. All no. right, fine. Joe Lissette is still the Miracle Man. Joe, if you're... Watching, I do apologize. Patrick, putting me in my place. As you should. And even if he's not watching, his substantial fan club is. All right. Well, everyone who does watch Miracle Tech, I apologize. Just stream. Yeah. Good name for a stream, by the way. Miracle Tech. I like it. T-E-K. Okay. 
I like the name of a stream. Oh, I don't know. Is it a pun on something, or is it just? Yeah. On what? I don't know. Well, how are you sure it's a pun then? I imagine that it is. It's not about being sure. <laughs> it's not about being sure. It's just assuming things. It just is what it is. And then announcing it on the air during a broadcast. <laughs> Look, you do you. Oscar it's me. not about being right. It's about being loud. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You just repeat things often enough and they just become true. I can say it louder and slower if you'd like. Yeah. You create I, your own reality. I, I have no problem doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Round nine of ten here. Two champions already crowned, both with mono red. Yep. Still keeping my fingers crossed that there's some burn or goblins pilot hanging out there, making a run. We did have Zoo, which is we close. Did. Six we and did. one at, at, at last check. If we want to stretch it, we can. We can say Zoo. Modern Zoo. Fits in that camp. Yeah. It was Modern base, Zoo with an updated mana base. Yeah. Brian, uh, Brian Rondo and giving it his first loss. Would be fun to see that in the top eight, though. I have to imagine, like, a Zoo deck just... It has to be good against, like, decks like this, right? Well, I don't know. His deck was a little a little soft to Tarmogoyf because he's playing just eight bolts instead of paths. But I'm sure, you know, Patel and Wilson would not be thrilled about playing that deck. Yeah, Turn 1 Wild Mikado doesn't seem like a joy to play against. Yeah. It's an already flipped Delver. It sure is. It sure is. Experiment 1's not shabby against these decks either. Yeah, Burning Trimisary facilitates some pretty interesting draws. But trust me, I was surprised when we found out we were going to be watching Zoo at 6-0. Yeah, I was at least expecting there to be some some old card in there. You yeah, know? I, I, was, I was a little bit surprised by that. And actually, it ended up being there were a lot of new ones. Yeah. So Jacob Wilson, Pro Tour, Born of the Gods, runner-up here with Blue at Red Delver. One more game to go. We'll see if he can win this one on the play. But a very skilled opponent here in Bug Delver. I mean, when, when you can still go Tiger Curdy, it just makes you feel like there's things in the world that are, are just never going to change, you know? It wasn't really my speed. I was never much of a zoo guy. That was the first combo I, I discovered, <laughs> you know, when I was a kid. It provides both the red mana and the forest <laughs> for Curdy. Yeah. Two, three for one's a really good deal. This is the deck I'm building. My first combo I discovered was Blastodurum Armageddon. That's... <laughs> That's that's not even lethal though. <laughs> we're playing. <laughs> we start the game over and you're at five, yeah, we're playing, which, I, which is okay. We're playing a different game. It was a sweet combo. But that's that's one of the that's one of the worst creatures you can pair with Armageddon. No, no way. You've got like a bird of paradise left over. Yeah. Come on. Built my Armageddon vexing devil deck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get you get on the board and then you. You hope you can finish them off. <laughs> <laughs> then there's some draw steps. They draw lands before you. You know, you shake their hand. <laughs> well, and they got unlucky there. Right. You should have had a Man Accelerant left behind. Were you excited when they printed Calciderm? You get eight Blastoderms Actually, this I did time? get excited, and then Calciderm was rubbish. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't even have that good of a picture. Yeah. Time for a ponder here for Patel in the face of Wilson's Delver of Secrets. We'll see what he does want to do with this. And it looks like a, oh, a pretty fast keep for a ponder. Must be a really good ponder. Usually people like to sit there and mull it over, even if they know they're keeping. Yeah, I guess that's true. Got I guess that is true. Greg Mitchell, Star City Games, Legacy Open Champion in Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, playing Bug Delver. Looks like he took down Jeff Hoogland, giving the Hoog his second loss. Unfortunate. Jeff's deck was pretty sweet. It was pretty sweet. And that Golgari charm for Patel here. Uh, I know that he's been playing around days, but this hand really doesn't allow him to... This card right here, he has to cast right now because those Delvers might flip. And Jacob at the ready with days. Yeah, either you have it or you don't. I, I think he has to cast. He's going to take a look, and now we're flipping them both. Ding-a-ling-ling. -ling. It's a calculated risk there. I think Patel has to take it. It's huge if it hits. Yeah, you know? and what's happening, at, what happens if they flip? Then, then they're not worth anything. Yeah. So you got to go for it. But now Patel really under the gun. Ponder here from Wilson. This is this is the Delver draw. Yeah. You don't see it a ton, but this is certainly it right now. Wilson going to keep with Ponder. And then he'll search. You have to imagine it's going to be a Volcanic. I suppose it could be a Tundra. Okay, there's a Volcanic. It's an interesting feature. The, the Bug Delver deck on the draw in Delver Mirrors feels a little slow to me. I know that's kind of an irrational thing because it's a lot of the same spells, but you're 
answer card being abrupt decay as opposed to source of plowshares or lightning bolt, it does come up on the draw. I think it's really important for the Bug Delver decks on the draw to have Death Rage on there. Yeah. That's what it feels like to me. Here's a ponder off a tropical island. That was a quick shuffle. And I believe that Patel has kept in Thoughtseize here, which is another card I'm not an enormous fan of because he's firmly the control deck in this matchup. It's betting a mana and two life. Tough to do against a deck like Jacobs. I know he's got some cards he really wants to fight over. Stoneforge Mystic, it gives him insurance against Batter Skull, but... Mystery card to Pluto Delta. Looks like that'll be the land for the turn, potentially. Yep. Patel probably considering a disfigure here. Take care of one of these flip Delvers. And that's going to bite the dust. Wilson not going to fight over that. He will check here, maybe. And he's actually going to make sure that it flips. So here's a Brainstorm. You can see a source of plowshares in Jacob's hand right now. So this is good to go. And it looks like it's going to be a two-turn clock here. Wilson going to show that Swords. He will flip that Delver. Just another day at the office for Jacob. In for six. Patel is going to go down to six. Jacob with a Pluted Delta. Doesn't want that other card. Stoneforge Mystic. Does that resolve? The answer is yes. Time to search up an equipment. It'll be Batter Skull yet again. Simply going to pass the turn back over to Patel. You know, a card like Toxic Deluge is certainly good in this situation. You have to pay the price to do it, but... That's not something he has access to. Patel's list is a little more tempo-oriented. You know, Death Rite Shaman, Delver of Secrets, a couple copies of Dark Confidant. Not clear he can really add that, that kind of card to his sideboard. And Wilson's draw just a little too fast. An extension of the hand. Jacob Wilson going to win this match. Two games to one. Blue Red Delver moving on. With any luck here for Jacob, he'll be able to draw on the top eight and maybe win another open series event with the Delver deck.